Hi, I'm Stu from HiveMind Automation and welcome to The Hive. In this video, we're counting down seven mistakes to avoid when setting up your smart home. Now, I know that I have made a few of these mistakes, so hopefully you don't have to. So while I roll the intro, take a moment to subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week and hit that like button. And let's get started. So if you're just getting started in home automation, it's really tempting to head out to the hardware store or electronics gadget store and buy a bunch of gadgets. But if you're not careful, that could actually be a mistake. So let's discuss the seven mistakes to avoid when you're setting up your smart home. In at number seven is relying on cloud connected devices. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll have seen me test a number of cloud connected smart home gadgets. And there's a few things I talk about every single time. The first problem I have with all the cloud connected gadgets I've tested is the introduction of extra latency when controlling the device. In the light bulb comparison video, I noticed around half a second of latency between making a change in the Tuya app for the Mirabella Genio bulb and that change then being reflected on the bulb itself. And in pre-testing of the smart switch comparison video using the Xiaomi Mi Home app to control the Xiaomi smart switches introduced a wide variation in latency anywhere from half a second and in one case nearly 10 seconds of latency. The reason for this is the need to send the command from your control device, whether it's Home Assistant or the native app, and then that message takes time to get to the cloud server. The cloud server then has to process that message, which can take some time. Normally it's pretty quick though, but then the result of that message or the command to the smart accessory then needs to be sent back to the accessory which is on your network. So it's making a full round trip. The location of the cloud server has a big impact here too. Depending on the vendor, the server could be in a data center on the opposite side of the world, or it could be down the end of the street. And that can make a big difference in terms of the latency. And that then leads us to the next problem with cloud services, which is the security implications. Now, depending on the vendor's setup, relying on cloud services may be detrimental to the network security of your smart home. If you do want to use cloud services, be sure to do your research and choose a reputable provider. And you absolutely must enable multi-factor authentication. The last problem I want to talk about with cloud connected services is the potential for changes to the terms of service. IFT or IFTTT changed their terms of service a couple of years back and a bunch of automations stopped working unless you were on a pro subscription. So what's to stop any other cloud provider from deciding that they regret not charging more for the devices and suddenly implementing a usage fee or simply cutting off access to your device. Another side of this is what happens if that vendor goes out of business? What happens to your devices? Are you still going to be able to use them? And what happens to your personal data? All of these reasons and more are why I think it's a mistake to rely on cloud services in your smart home. Don't get me wrong. Cloud services do have their place, and I think that you just need to make sure you're choosing the right battles with this. Mistake number six is forgetting about the other people that live in your home. Now, it's pretty easy to get swept up in the excitement of home automation and start installing smart lights and smart switches, but not consult your housemates or significant other and making sure that they're in the loop about changes that are happening. Remember that home automation and smart homes are supposed to make your lives easier, not harder. If you have to write an instruction manual, you've failed. This also comes into play if you have guests over. 
They need to be comfortable that they're able to turn on lights without a hassle. And another consideration here is patching and maintenance. If your home assistant instance is being patched during wakey hours, what impact is that going to have on automations that your family use routinely? I've made the mistake of patching at the wrong time of day many, many times, and every single time I get told there's something wrong with the lights. Mistake number five that you want to avoid making is failing to do your research, and I mentioned this before when we were talking about cloud services. While it's tempting to just go and grab that smart gadget that's on the shelf in your local supermarket just telling you to buy it, it might just be a rabbit hole that you don't want to go down. There's a lot of research that should go into choosing gadgets for your smart home. First and foremost is checking the Home Assistant integrations documentation to see if there's already an integration for the gadget you're looking at getting. Second, always search for reviews. And I'd also recommend searching the Home Assistant forums too. While there might be an integration for the device or platform that you're looking to integrate into Home Assistant, it is entirely possible that you'll get your gadget home and discover that the integration isn't passing some or any of the control into Home Assistant. I'm looking at you, Tuya. It's pretty frustrating going through the excitement of opening up the box of a new smart gadget only to have that excitement quashed by a poor integration experience. Doing your research is absolutely essential and it is my hope that I can be a trusted advisor for you on your smart home journey to help you with your research phase. Search through my videos to see if there's something that helps you out or reach out to me in the comments section down below or on the social media. I do try to respond to all the comments in the section below, at least the ones that aren't spam. So if you've got a question, drop it down below and I'll try to get back to you. While you're at it, maybe subscribe and make sure that you don't miss out on any of my videos. Mistake number four is not having a plan, and this kind of ties into not doing your research. But not having a plan for implementing a new gadget or automation can cause some problems for you. I've lost count of the number of days that I've lost starting a project, like installing the smart downlights here in the dining room, without properly planning out the steps I need to take to complete the project and it inevitably ends up taking four times as long to complete because I get sidetracked and do things out of order and then end up having to backtrack. Take some time to plan out the project, even if it's just the introduction of one new accessory, including the automations you're going to use with that accessory, you'll have a much better time and your project will probably be done quicker. Mistake number three is buying the wrong accessories. And this ties in with some of the others here, like the point about research or cloud connectivity. But buying the wrong accessories is a mistake I've made. I picked up some Ikea GU10 light bulbs in New York City a while back, thinking, great, they'll go great in my LED downlights at home. Now I committed a few sins here. First, I didn't do my research and the lights that I purchased were only rated for 110 volt electrical systems. For those who don't know, here in Australia we run on 220, it's normally about 240, but we it's supposed to be 220. So as soon as I tried to configure those IKEA GU10 bulbs here on Australian power, they died. Now the second problem here is, again, I didn't do my research and I made the assumption that the standard downlights in my home were GU10 fittings. They weren't. They're a sealed LED downlight that doesn't have a separate replaceable bulb. And thirdly, I was just so excited to be able to buy a trad-free accessory because this was before they were available here in Australia. I did it without a plan. Learn from my mistakes. Do your research and buy the right accessories. Mistake number two is wasting money. Take a moment to think about the problem that you're trying to solve and then think about the value of that problem. Something like a flood sensor might only cost 20 to 30 bucks, but used right, it can save you hundreds or even thousands of dollars in repair bills by letting you know that there's a problem with water, before your home gets damaged. 
at the other end of the spectrum spending $300 on a smart garage door opener to replace a perfectly working garage door opener just so you can open and close it using Siri is probably not a good investment. Take a moment to consider the options available. I saw a smart garage door opener at Bunnings the other day for 279 Australian dollars. If you've already got a motorized door, you'd be far better off spending around 50 US dollars to get something like the open garage or 99 US dollars to get the garage it. So don't spend $300 solving a $50 problem. And now for the number one mistake to avoid when setting up your smart home and that is not seeking advice. This ties into doing your research, but it's important when taking on smart home projects to know your limits and seek advice where you're not sure about something. Again, my hope is to be your trusted advisor for smart home projects. So use the comments section or reach out on social media if you've got questions. It's important to seek the advice of people who might have been through the same thing before. I know that when I first got started, I spent a lot of time reading articles and watching YouTube videos from some of my fellow smart home YouTubers. So those are my seven mistakes to avoid when setting up your smart home. Did I miss any? Have you made any of these mistakes yourself? Let me know in the comments section down below and let's keep the conversation going. That's all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your smart home automation journey. Be sure to comment down below with a home automation idea you'd like to see me cover in a future video. Don't forget to follow Hive Mind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and I'll put those links in the video description down below. If you like this video, give the thumbs up button down below a click. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing now. While you're at it, hit that bell icon so you get notified when I release new videos each week. And lastly, if you enjoy what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, I've put a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below and contributions through buy me a coffee get put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.